moment to hear from our sponsor. Did you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? It can lead to acne, allergies, stuffy noses, and it's just gross. Miracle Made offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that pres- that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. Their self-cooling properties using sick, using silver-infused fabrics inspired by NASA. Um, Miracle Made sheets are the thermal regulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you get better sleep every night. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel just as nice, if not nicer, than bed sheets used by some five star hotels. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash ATI and use the code ATI to claim your three piece towel set and save over 40% off your order. That's miracle. That's trymiracle.com slash ATI to treat yourself. And thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Honestly, the three towels that come with the sheets is an amazing ad because I feel like everyone, like you got to switch out your bed or your bath towels a lot because those just get gross. Yeah. And I love, I love the sheets. I've been sleeping on them. Yeah. For two nights great. and I am a power sweater at they're night. They're great. And I, I've been good. Yeah. Yeah. They're I've awesome. Been good. I've been dying to try the towels. We've been trying the sheets. Great. Now I'm like, I need to get, I need to get some towels too. I mean, I'm ready. What's up guys. Welcome back to After the Island. I'm Elizabeth. I'm Alex. And we have Zay with us today. What's up guys. How's it going? Good. good. How are you doing? I'm good. A little tired. Um, getting back in the swing of things of being a average person again. <laughs> a normal human. <laughs> a normal human. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. How, like, how does it actually feel being back? Like, do you miss it? Are you happy to be home? Uh, I'm not going to lie. It was way easier being back in the villa because I didn't have nearly as many responsibilities as I do now. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like coming back here and like having my phone and like all the emails, um, all of like going back to work, like military. Um, I actually don't even have an apartment right now because I moved out right before I came to the villa. So I'm just hanging out with my friends in Florida because I got to go back to um, Pennsylvania and then I got to go back to New York. So it's pretty stressful, but. Wow. Where in Pennsylvania? So um, my Air Force base is right next to the Pittsburgh International Airport. So I just kind of have to report in there and stuff. And I'm from Philly, so. Oh, oh Philly. Yeah. Oh, I got God. some friends over there in Philly. Oh, Philly. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so how did you end up on the show? How'd they find you? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how they found me. Um, they reached out to me on Instagram. I have one day, I just went into my Instagram and went to my, um, what you call it? The, uh, not the, uh, the DMs, but like the, um, the DM requests. Yeah. Yeah. And I had saw an e or a a, a DM a DM a DM <laughs> a DM <laughs> yeah no a DM from this girl and she had you know was said something about Love Island I kind of didn't really think anything of it I actually didn't even know what Love Island was before reading that email and so I googled it and I was like oh it's a TV show and so from that point forward I kind of just like promised myself I would take it as far as I went and it got me on the show so. Oh, fun. Very thankful for that. Yeah. yeah. So, so since cool. you didn't watch it, did you know what Casa Amor was? Like, did you have any idea what you were about to embark on? Uh, honestly, not really. I watched about like half of the season of season four. And I actually skipped uh, over the Casa Amor part. Stop. So going into Casa Amor, I didn't. That too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just like boring. I don't know. Because, like, you know how, like, you get attached to, like, all the original characters? Yeah. Because, it's like, I was watching the beginning of the season. I was like, oh, I like all these people. And then Costumer was, like, a whole new group of people. I was like, ah, and I skipped past that. You're like, but, now I'm one of those men. Yeah, yeah now I'm one of those guys. What was the guys got skipped over. <laughs> what was your game plan going in? Like, when you were watching up until then, oh. like, who were you interested in? Um, I actually had no game plan whatsoever, honestly. I didn't really view it as, like, having a game plan i just kind of went in there just wanting to be myself and um i feel like i give everybody a fair shot for the most part i actually wasn't expecting to have such a good connection with destiny off the jump and that just worked out really great for the both of us immediately and i kind of just like stuck with that mm-hmm. and 
Yeah, unfortunately, it didn't play out in our favor once we got to the villa, but. Yeah, that was, that was my game plan, if anything. But like you weren't like going in, you didn't have like a top three or like people you knew you wanted to talk to or that you were interested in. Yeah, yeah no. So I, I had a top three, and my top three like changed like every other day. I feel like like before. Walk us through what it was. Um, Destiny was in no specific order, but Destiny was my top three for a decent amount of time. Um, I feel like her personality; she was just really mature. Mm-hmm. And that's something I kind of definitely look for, like, in a girl. Um, there was her. There was Carmen. Uh, I actually didn't even pull Carmen for any chats whatsoever at all throughout my entire time in Love Island. Um, I had interest in Emily, too, but she had, you know, gotten down with right before I went on. I think we need a compilation of every single guy saying that Emily was in their top yeah. three and then she wasn't in the villa. <laughs> and then all the Casa girls said the same thing about, about Harrison. Harrison. <laughs> That's actually hilarious because, like, I remember we were all sitting there waiting or standing there waiting for the little girls to come in, and we look over to see, like, the uh, the, cups of, the cups of champagne that were poured for us, and we were counting the cups, and we were like, oh, there's one missing. Like, who is that? And we read the names, and like, who do we don't see? It's like, Emily. And we're like, oh, shit, Emily's not here. Uh-huh. And so that was kind of a curveball, but, you know, it worked out. Yeah. But what? How did you feel the night you and Destiny went to the hideaway and Destiny fell asleep while you were brushing your teeth? Oh, uh, yeah, no. Honestly, we were both just, like, extremely tired that night, and I was kind of borderline delusional. I was acting like a clown in there. Uh, I was definitely nervous, too. Um, she comes off as kind of, like, a little bit intimidating, not going to lie, but it's not a bad thing at all. That was more so, like, meant to grow your relationship together in like a personal, you know, in a personal way, not, not like being surrounded by everybody, just kind of like testing the waters of how you guys interact when you're alone more so than like sexualization or like being sexual in there. Totally. So that was kind of like what we thought of it. And well, you guys did get the time to do that. Cause like me watching as a viewer, you guys walked in and she fell asleep. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you guys even like had a chance to talk in there. Uh, yeah, I know we did talk. A lot of it didn't, didn't make it onto the, to the episode I saw, but um, no, we actually talked in there for about an hour and a half before we went to sleep, and she fell asleep, and I tucked her in. But that was cute. <clears throat> yeah, no, that was actually so cute. You were like really picking cute. up her head. Her head was like hanging off the side of the bed. I know she, her head was hanging off the side of the bed. I, I we were talking about that the next day, and we were like, that's probably going to go down in history as the most boring um, hideaway experience on Love Island history. Yeah, I mean, they showed it on movie night, the Tale of Two Hideaways. <laughs> I know it was like when that came up on the screen, the tail of Hope Two Hideaways. I was telling the boys, I was like, we might as well not pick that. I didn't really do anything interesting. We just kind of sat in there and talked. <laughs> <laughs> oh Wait, my god! Were there any? Did you watch back that whole episode and the next one? Because I'm wondering, like, of the movie. Oh, uh, I actually haven't watched back that episode. I haven't watched back any of the episodes, but um, I remember playing the games. Like, regardless of who won, the girls had their own page. Like, if the girls won, like, that that question, then they had their own ones they could choose from, and same thing with guys. But it was always the same videos, so ultimately all the videos ended up being played, so we didn't really have a choice. Right. And it seemed like we had a choice. I don't know really what kind of – which one you guys saw, but no, 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 we, we played all of them. I just don't know if, like, we saw every single video on each page, like, made it to Oh. Yeah, no, I guess I would have to watch the episode back. Yeah, to know. I haven't seen it. Did they show? I mean, they saw the one with Mike. Yeah, they, um, they covered the big ones. Yeah. I didn't think that mine was that big. So I'm surprised you guys saw that. It was just funny. It, they they need some comedic relief in the middle yeah. of all the the dramatic ones. Wait, so you, so you get back to the villa and you're with Destiny and then you start having conversations with Destiny or you tried to have conversations with Destiny about exploring other options in the villa. What yeah. kind of like changed with that? How come you weren't still zeroed in on destiny or like what was kind of going through your head? So coming, coming back into the villa, um, I felt like when we were, we were waiting in the, in, um, what's it called? The Riz room before walking out. And I, re- I remember destiny's like her demeanor kind of changing. Um, 
I felt like she was very stressed and I'm not really too sure what it was. Maybe just like going back to the villa. She had always told me throughout the, our entire our time in Costa Moore that like the villa is no joke. Like the villa is like, like she was saying that Costa Moore is like a vacation away from the villa. And I was like, you know, I can't even really think anything of it. But then going back into the villa, um, I felt like she was kind of more focused on rekindling relationships that she had in the villa prior to coming to Costa Moore. And she was kind of more interested in other people's drama and other people's relationships than ours. And so like for the first day or two coming back into the villa, um, we remained kind of stagnant. We didn't really talk that much. Um, I pretty much just like wandered around the villa and just chilled out until she, you know, came around and talked to me. And so she, I just felt like she didn't really talk to me at all. Um, and she just kind of changed coming back into the villa. And then she had also told me that she had left things open with Mike, which I knew and I understood. And I told her that, you know, that's totally okay. Like I get that it's before me and I know you have to go talk to him and whatnot to figure that out. And so um, ultimately she ended up having a chat with him and she had told me that she was going to have like one chat to kind of like close the door because she wanted to be close off with me. And then I remember her going and having that chat and coming back to me after that and saying, yeah, I basically left the door open with her and Mike. And so that kind of made me feel some type of way because I was waiting around kind of like the first day or two after coming back to the villa. And so, yeah, it was just like from that point forward, we just kind of got distant from each other. And that's kind of when things started to go south and fall apart. Yeah, because then I saw one of the the last conversations you guys had where she like walked away as you were just trying to tell her like I'm talk I'm gonna start talking to other mm -hmm. people. Did you that who did you then talk to after? Did you even end up talking to anyone? Like we didn't really get to see it. Yeah, so that that day when I tried to talk to her, I tried to talk to her like three or four times to try to pull her for a chat. The first time, she was taken away, um, to another conversation with her. Imani and Taylor and then I was like okay yeah I'll talk to you after and then the second time around she was walking near the kitchen and I said hey do you want to go for a chat now and she said she like um nodded at me and then Taylor came around and said oh I'm still talking to Destiny I'll talk to her or I'll talk to you later Destiny I guess and then that was the second time and the third time um I was on the other side of the villa just chilling out and then I was kind of waiting her for for her to come down this was like right after lunchtime and I saw her come down I was like I yelled at her, not yelled at her, but like voiced to her um, over the pool. I was like, do you want to go talk? And we walked down to the beach and then she was like really okay with talking at first. And then as soon as I kind of sat down, she just was like, yeah, no, I don't want to talk to you. And I was just like, you know, okay. And then kind of stormed off. That seemed like to be a pattern that would happen whenever I would try to talk to her. Did you have to, I thought that you guys had the conversation like several times, or maybe I just saw that discourse somewhere. Um, so I feel like people were like, why do they have to have this conversation a hundred times? And was it yeah. uh, like, did, did you ever have one that was actually legitimate and not the one that we saw of her just like walking away? It kind of ended just like that. No, that that's exactly how it ended. Honestly, it was, I tried to like voice that to her multiple times and tried to have like a good conversation where we can come to consensus as a couple. And I feel like every time I tried to talk about it and voice my opinion and voice how I felt, it really wasn't um, taken into consideration at all. And she kind of put up this wall and just got like extremely defensive over how I felt. And I was, I felt like I was very understanding of how she felt, but it wasn't reciprocated. And because of that, like conversation after conversation after conversation, it didn't really amount to anything or any like solid understanding for each other. And so over time, that's when, you know, you, you guys saw at the pool when she, when I, she tried to sit down with me and she ended up just walking away. And from that point forward, it's kind of just like, all right, I'm done trying. Like, I'm not going to try to force myself to have a conversation with you. If you don't want to listen to me, then that's fine. But yeah, that's kind of like where we decided to go our several ways. Walk me through the switcheroo of the, the recoupling. The recoupling. Um, more specifically, what do you mean? How you ended up with Imani. And mm. who did Destiny end up with? Kyle. K oh, Kyle. Kyle, yeah. That was a switcheroo for sure. Uh, yeah, I was not expecting that at all. Um, after Destiny, I kind of had brief talks with uh, Cassie and Johnny. They didn't really amount to anything. Um, and then kind of getting closer to the end and like the last week, um, 
I had actually never talked to Imani or never pulled her for a chat. And so we tied, we had one conversation the night before or the night of the recoupling, like during the day, like the evening, right before dinner, we had one conversation that was like 30, 45 minutes long. It was very, it was a really good conversation. Um, kind of, it was just like the basics of like getting to know somebody. And so when she picked me that night in the recoupling, I was definitely surprised. Like I said that I was fully prepared to go home that night. I just figured that my person wasn't there and I was just like, all right, that's it. But then she picked me and I'm very grateful for that. Very thankful for that. I just wish that we had talked earlier, like way earlier than we should have, but she's, we like love her. She's hilarious. Who doesn't? She's a hard person to hate, honestly. She's a great girl. She's great. She's so funny. She's so unique. Are you going to continue to pursue each other outside of the villa? Are you taking it step by step, day by day? Um, that's, a, that's a question I've thought about before. Um, it, things are kind of difficult being that we live on t- like totally the opposite sides of the United States. Um, we had rode back on the plane together. We sat next to each other on the airplane. Um, we had our flight or our, actually our, our, our seats weren't together, but we asked somebody if we could sit together. So we ended up switching our seats so we could sit together. And, you know, we just talked the whole flight. We hung out. And um, I had a layover in L.A. And she lived in L.A., so that was her final stop. And she had offered to, like, hang out the rest of the day in L.A. And I was, like, I was I was going to, like, 100%. But then, you know, I had to get my bags. And then I had to recheck them. And then I had to, like, walk to the other side of the airport. So it was just, like, a huge, like, uh, I didn't want it to be, like, not not so much like force. I didn't want to. I don't want her just coming back to the United States and being like, "Oh, now you have to hang out with me for the next eight hours until I have to go back home." So I think definitely in the future, um, I could foresee myself hanging out with her. I told her that we would definitely see each other again, and I think that's definitely going to happen. Nice, amazing. Well, okay. So obviously, the big moment that we all saw while you were leaving was the whole Scott situation where he kind of voted and said the the friend vibe comment and you and Imani clearly yeah. were upset by it um walk us through that situation how awkward was it and like how out of pocket was that comment in the moment Scott from Wales um a little bit ridiculous honestly <laughs> um I actually had never voiced that to him that was something that he overheard me talking to Bergie and, and Marco about on the B-Bags. You guys can, I think you guys will probably see that in the episode, but I actually never voiced that to him, nor did I ever really talk to him about my relationship with Imani. So for him to say that was kind of ridiculous, and I actually, same thing with Johnny, I've never talked to her about my relationship with Imani either. Um, and I don't think Imani talked to either of them either, so I don't know where they really got that from. Um, and nonetheless, I did say that I did say that is more of a friendship vibe. And initially, yes, that's exactly what it was because we had literally talked one time before the recoupling. And so before like any relationship is built or any significant relationship is built between two people starts up with a friendship. So the friendship vibes was based off of like a just casual conversation of getting to know each other. Um, the reason why I had not voiced that to Imani, because we didn't have enough time. I didn't have enough time to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to like tell her off the jump, like after having one or two conversations with her, like, yeah, I just view you as a friend. I haven't had three, four or five conversations with you. It could have developed into something else. So for me to say that to her, I feel like wouldn't have been fair at all because it wouldn't have been a fair shot for either of us if I just said that to her. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it definitely does. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it's hard to have conversations in the villa, let alone, like, trying to make new connections at the end yeah. of, mm-hmm. you know, finale week. Um, how did you feel when Imani got up and kind of, like, went and walked over and was standing there, like, as you guys got kicked off and you were kind of still sitting? Oh, yeah. On, she, like, gets up pit. and leaves, and you were still there, and then you, like, just decide to get up finally and move over. You're laughing. I hate that. Yeah, because I was really not expecting that because I know the reason why she got up was because Scott and Johnny, when they said that about me viewing her as just like having a friendship vibe, I feel like that was, that had malicious intent being like, oh, he said this behind your back that you're just his friend. He's a terrible guy. Like, no, that was not the case at all. So for him to say that was like definitely malicious intent and that made her feel like 
I was not who she, who she thought I was. And so she had every right to get up and walk away because if I was there, I would have probably done the same thing. So it sounded like this guy was talking about me behind my back and didn't really voice that to me. But it was unfair for me to voice that to her because we had to have multiple talks. But um, yeah, so I was just sat there and I just was like shocked that she got up and walked away. And I looked over at Scott and John and just like, why would you say that? Yeah, that was your redemption for me. Like you sticking up for her was very nice to watch. It was. God, I just it just felt like right like I definitely needed to say something because I was totally not fair to her or I yeah do you think Scott is there just playing a game <clears throat> yes huh. I mean yeah we honesty. do too I mean yeah you do. I think everybody with two eyes and a brain would think so yeah no I, I know it's pretty... <laughs> um what's your fondest memory from being in the villa or casa maybe something we didn't see I know you didn't see everything but my fondest memory uh, honestly when we were standing there waiting for all these girls to come in to cost some more um the build-up was crazy because we were in there for like hours we did like the the photo shoots like walking the walk up into the cost some more with our suits on that took forever like forever hours and um so kind of like just that build up and it's all standing there waiting for the girls to come in i remember them coming in and like they walked up like they were like five feet from me and like oh my god these are actually real people and these people like i don't have to watch them on the screen anymore they're actually real tangible people and then like i just felt like super high like it wasn't real like it wasn't real life some tiktoks i see some comments <laughs> i see some i see people it. wanting so, to slide it so not not so much my uh dm my dms but um Definitely a comment or two, for sure. I did. I know what uh, what TikTok you're referring to with uh, Jasmine and Anna. Yeah. 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 I, I haven't. I haven't talked to them, other than like seen a comment or responded to a comment. Yeah. But I don't know. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Several people asking you if you want to date them, <laughs> and if you'll date. Oh really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would you? Ever I, don't, I don't even have fans. <laughs> There's no way. I'm, I'm not. I'm just a normal person. Or uh, somebody had told me. A little bird had told me that you guys called me weird, or said said that what? I was weird. Called you weird? No, we didn't. I don't know. There was somebody that told me. That you guys made a comment. I forget what we said. If anything, I predicted you were gonna. I knew you were gonna go back into the villa. Uh, well, appreciate that. And the, what was the other thing what I did we said? Say? The only thing I said that would maybe be bad is that i did want to swap the three casa boys that came back for the three casa boys that did not make it in but i think mm. that's the only thing i ever said okay that's what I also because we just saw you and matia sitting on the sidelines yeah you and matia were just <laughs> like you're like the meme of the guys like it's like a fake scene of the guy just playing on like the water slide of the reality show and he just keeps going slide and then they vote him off and he's like Wait, what so I have hell? to leave, leave the water slide? <laughs> <laughs> but is, that was because Matia and I, we were just so up and down in our drama with, like, the girls where it's, like, neither of us really wanted to deal with the drama. I just wanted to be 100% with one person the whole time. Like, seeing Carmen and Kenzo and seeing Marco and Hannah just, like, hip to hip, like, enjoying each other's time. I was just so jealous of that. I was like, I just want to be in the pool, just, like, laying around, just, like, having a girl. Why can't they be me? And... Mitzi and I always like thought about that and more so more more so like when you're actually in the villa it is like and you guys can attest to this problem but it's difficult like if you don't have a, a person there with you that you can share feelings with you can share emotions with and you guys are like this it's tough it's tough to be in there by yourself and so Mitzi and I kind of had that friendship where we held each other accountable we were able to talk about things so yeah we were boys but I do agree we probably should have gotten up and went around and talked a little bit more with everybody that's but, fair. but that's why i'm like saying like rob and brandon are like they feel younger they feel messier they would have been you know as a viewer i'm like i want everything to be all stirred up like the stable yeah the stable <laughs> fun to watch and i'm i'm even the one saying that who literally i was like stable from the day one to the end and was so boring so yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was I was definitely thinking that that's what the experience. I just wanted to find my person, and yeah, it just sucks that my person wasn't really on there. Well, maybe we can go on Love Island Games and find somebody. 
Love Island, Love Island Games. Oh man, maybe Love Island UK. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the limit. I'm like, I think you'd get eaten alive on there personally, but I love I like. You think, think so? Could be better. I don't. Why, why do you think I'd be eaten alive on there? I think I think all three of us would. You think so? Just because we're we're not we're not up to have you you haven't seen the show, so we're not up to yeah, par with that level of drama. We're just not. We're not cut for it. Our banter is not as funny. Yeah, we're not as cheeky. <laughs> cheeky. <for> yourself. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I'm pretty mundane. I would probably be, uh, yeah. It's all shitting on ourselves. <laughs> Guys, we're great. <laughs> okay. okay, we can come in as like yeah, a we're great. triple bombshell for UK yeah. next year. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Zay, it's been so great getting to talk to you, get to hear more from you about everything. Um, thank you so My much course. for coming on here. Yeah. Uh, for everyone listening, we're going to link Zay's socials down below. If you want to follow him, send him a DM or a D-mail. And <laughs> like this video, comment below any more questions you might have for Zay. And we look forward to seeing you guys soon. And check out all of our other interviews with all of our other ex-Islanders. Yes, thank you. All right, bye, Zay. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. You're the best.